What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to solve equations that have fractional exponents, and sometimes they're called rational exponents, right? So here we have 2x in parentheses raised to the 3 fourths plus 2 is equal to 10, all right? So we're just trying to solve for x here, right? So we want to isolate that. So the first thing we can do is get rid of this plus 2 by subtracting 2 from both sides, all right? So then we're left with 2x raised to the 3 fourths is equal to 8, right? Now, in order to get rid of this fractional exponent, we have to raise everything to this exponent, but flipped over, right? The reciprocal. So to get rid of this exponent, we need to raise the whole thing, this whole side, to the 4 thirds power, okay? And whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other, right? So we have to raise this whole side to the 4 thirds power as well. All right, so then on this side, uh, these cancel out. So then we're just left with right here, what's in parentheses, 2x, right? So we're going to say 2x, and then that's equal to this guy over here, which is 8 raised to the 4 thirds. Okay, now how do we simplify 8 raised to the 4 thirds? Well, one thing I like to do is take out the numerator and just replace it with a 1, okay? So basically we're going to write it as, and we can do it on the side over here. So we'll say... 8 to the 4 thirds, right? We can say that this is equal to 8 raised to the 1 third, and then we're going to raise that whole thing to the number that we just took out, the 4. Okay? Now, 8 raised to the 1 third, that's the same thing as the cube root of 8, right? Whenever you raise something to the 1 third power, it's the same thing as taking the cube root of it. Whenever you raise something to the 1 half power, or just half power, that's the same thing as taking the square root of a number. If you raise something to the one-fourth power, it's the same thing as taking the fourth root of a number, right? One-fifth is the same thing as the fifth root, and so on. So, again, uh, eight raised to the one-third, that's the same thing as the cube root of eight, right? So we can say that this is equal to the cube root of eight raised to the fourth power. And the cube root of eight is just equal to two, right? So this is equal to 2 raised to the fourth power, which is equal to 16, right? So then 8 raised to the four thirds is equal to simply 16. So we can say that 2x is equal to 16. So then here we can see that x is equal to 8, right? So that'd be our answer right there. All right, here's the next one. So we have in parentheses x plus 30 raised to the one half is equal to x, okay? So again, to get rid of this fractional exponent, you just have to raise the whole thing to this exponent, the same exponent, just flip it, all right? So we're gonna raise everything to two over one, or simply just two, right, same thing. And again, what we do to one side of an equation, we do to the other. So let's raise this whole side to the second power also. Okay, so then over here, the one half and the two, those cancel out. So then we're just left with x plus 30, is equal to x squared, okay? Now you can see we almost have something in standard form here, right? Because uh, we have this x squared, this x, and then just a constant. So let's move all these onto the same side, and then we can solve for x by just factoring it, okay? So here we can, let's move everything to the right side. So we'll subtract x and subtract 30 from both sides. So subtract x, subtract 30, right? So then over here, we just end up with a big fat zero, and that's equal to x squared minus x minus 30. Okay, cool. So now this little trinomial right here, we can factor this, right? So we're going to say that zero is equal to, let's see, uh, we're going to have x uh, needs to multiply to 30, right? So minus 6 and x plus 5, right? So we have two factors here, so basically two answers. So here for this set of parentheses, we're going to get that x is equal to positive 6. And here we get that x is equal to negative 5, right? So as you can see, we got two answers, right? Uh, 6 and negative 5. Now when you get two answers, you want to check for extraneous solutions. And the way you do that is just by plugging in each of your solutions back into the original equation. So I'm going to move this thing to the side a little bit just to give us a little bit of room to check these two answers. So let's check x is equal to 6 first, all right? Let's check x is equal to 6. And I'm going to erase some of this stuff just to make it a little more clear what the original uh, problem was. Uh, there we go. Okay, 
So we have x plus 30 raised to the 1 half is equal to x, right? So here we're going to have 6 plus 30 raised to the 1 half is equal to x, which again is 6, right? So then here, 6 plus 30 is 36. So we get 36 raised to the 1 half is equal to 6. Now, like I told you, whenever you raise something to the 1 half power, it's the exact same thing as just taking the square root of it. So this is the exact same thing as just the square root of 36 is equal to 6. So here we get that 6 is equal to 6, right? Obviously a true statement. So that means this solution that we tested, x is equal to 6, is a real solution. It is a true solution, right? So now let's check our other solution. See if that one is extraneous or not. So this one is x is equal to negative 5, right? So let's plug in x is equal to negative 5 right here. So we're going to get that negative 5 plus 30 raised to the 1 half is equal to negative 5. Right here we get, uh, looks like 25, right? So 25 raised to the 1 half is equal to negative 5. Here again, this is the same thing as just the square root of 25. So that's equal to negative 5. And the square root of 25 is equal to positive 5. Okay, so 5 is not equal to negative 5, right? And just to be clear, uh, whenever you're solving for the square root of just a regular number, you're specifically just looking for the principal root, just the positive answer, all right? So that's why negative 5 is not a solution in this case, okay? So since x is equal to negative 5 is not a solution, right? It doesn't work in our equation. That means that this one is extraneous. I'll write it real quick, extraneous, okay? So that just means it's not really a solution. All right, last one here. So we have two times in parentheses x plus 11 raised to the 1 half is equal to x plus 3, right? Now this one's going to be a little bit different. So uh, first, to get rid of this 1 half uh, power, we need to raise the whole side again to this exact same power, just flip it, right? So 2 over 1, again, is just... And what we do to one side, we do to the other, right? So we have to apply it to this side also. Now, this exponent out here, you have to apply it to everything that's inside of the brackets. So in this case, uh, we're going to apply it to the x plus 11 raised to the 1 half, like we've been doing. But we also have this 2 out here, out in front, right? So we have to apply the exponent to this 2 also. So if we apply it to the 2, that's going to be 2 squared, which is equal to 4, right? So here we're going to have 4. And then uh, if we apply the 2, again, to this exponent, the 1 half, those are just going to cancel each other out. So then we're just left with x plus 11, right? x plus 11. All right, now this is going to be equal to this guy over here, x plus 3 squared, which I'll multiply out. So that's the same thing as x plus 3 times x plus 3, okay? Now here we can uh, distribute the 4 inside of the parentheses, right? So here we're going to get 4x plus 44 is equal to, and then here we can just foil these two together. So we're going to get x squared plus 3x plus 3x, that's plus 6x, right, plus 9. Okay, now you can see that we have this guy in standard form, so we can just take all these terms on the left and move them to the right. So we can keep this in standard form. So we're going to subtract 4x and subtract 44, right? Subtract 4x, subtract 44. Those guys cancel out, so then we're left with 0 is equal to x squared uh, plus 2x minus 35, right? So then here we get that 0 is equal to this guy, so we can factor this guy, right? So it looks like we're going to have, uh, let's see, has to multiply to negative 35, so plus 7 and minus 5, right? So then again, we're going to get two answers, right? We're going to get x is equal to negative 7 and x is equal to positive 5, right? Now, the last thing we want to do is just check for extraneous solutions. But I'm just going to let you check those on your own. And I'm going to tell you right now that x is equal to 5 is your real solution and x is equal to negative 7 is your extraneous solution. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.